This presentation provides baseline information on the economic landscape that the opt-in region must navigate. In moving forward, we must not only consider the local trends and internal forces that we have some control over, we must also consider the broader trends and external forces that we have little to no control over. Both are important factors in making decisions. So first we're going to review these broader trends and forces and then we're going to turn to the regional trends and connect them to the bigger picture. But first let's begin by reviewing the spatial distribution of the state's population. In other words how people are spread out across the state. We're going to see how this has changed over time and where we are today. Now on this map each blue dot represents about 5,000 people and as we can see, in 1900, people were very evenly spread out across the state. But as time passes, the population becomes more and more concentrated in a few areas. These are our urban areas. In a sense, two different North Carolinas have emerged, urban North Carolina and rural North Carolina. Now let's look at the change in total employment for North Carolina between 1969 and 2008 and see how this compares to the national employment levels. As the figure illustrates, the state has performed very well and actually performed much stronger than the rest of the country in the latter part of this period. But the question is how did this experience or this success translate to the urban and rural areas of the state? And as this figure illustrates, the success was realized mostly in the urban areas. The rural areas have lagged behind and the urban and rural gap continues to get larger and larger. The upshot here is that there are two North Carolinas, urban and rural. They have different challenges, different opportunities, and most important for decision makers, they have different solutions. So let's move to the trends that are more specific to the region. And first, we're going to look at the change in total employment or the employment growth for the region and compare that to that of the state two things stand out. One, the region was actually performing better than the state prior to the Great Recession. And two, the region was particularly hit hard by the recession and lags behind in the recovery. And it's worth noting that this lagging performance since the recession is shared by the larger Western North Carolina region. Now let's break down total employment into two categories for the region. Goods producing activities and service providing activities. And then we're going to compare the regional numbers to that of the state. And again, two things stand out. One, economic activity has shifted away from goods producing to service providing activities. And this trend is larger than the region. Indeed, these figures look strikingly similar. Now, if we look at the goods producing activities by sector, we're able to see that the decline in goods producing activities is due to a decline in manufacturing. But we can see here that the decline in manufacturing is a larger trend facing the state and the nation, not just the region. In other words, the opportunities for manufacturing activity is shrinking across the board, not just for the region. This means that landing and keeping those opportunities are getting more and more difficult. The good news, however, is the increasing employment and service providing activities. If we look at employment in the, these sectors, we identify two important sectors, education and health and leisure and hospitality. Both are leading employers for the region, but they're also showing strong growth. Now, these sectors are also growth areas for the state, but it's particularly strong in the region. So the region is quite fortunate to have these significant assets in education, health, and natural amenities. While rural areas are struggling, some have fared better than others, and those that have done better typically have these type of amenities. Now let's look at a few measures that are closely related to one another, like income, education, and age. We see that the region's income per capita is almost $36,000 a year. Now this is a bit lower than the income level for the state, but this isn't surprising considering the urban-rural divide. What might be more interesting is to see how the region fares if you compare it against other rural areas. And in this regard, the opt-in region is doing reasonably well. Now we turn to education attainment. We're going to look at the percentage of the population with a college degree and for the opt-in region that's 19 percent. Again this is lower than the state level and urban areas in general but again the opt-in region fares quite well when compared against the other rural areas in the country. 
If you look at other education metrics, it tells the same story. Now we're going to turn to age. And this is one of the main drivers of the lagging statistics in rural areas. And that's because of the outmigration of the younger and more educated population. Now, an opt in region has a median age of about 45 years, which is not only higher than urban areas, but it's also higher than other rural areas. So, while the opt in region looks a lot like other rural areas that have fared better than most, this is one metric that looks different. And the distinction is that other rural areas that have done well have done so by attracting younger and educated people with their natural cultural amenities. But the opt in region however, appears to have attracted the same type of person, but just older. So to close, let's provide some key things to consider when deciding how to move forward. First, it's important to recognize the larger economic landscape that the opt-in region must navigate and how the region fits into that landscape. Now, this is going to require us to identify what can be influenced locally and what is beyond our control but it also requires us to identify activities that have some wind at their backs and those activities that are facing headwinds. And for rural areas, the future rests on identifying opportunities to create economic activity, not compete for it. And it's important to recognize the role of amenities for rural economies.